To some breaking news now on the Senate Committee into Air Services has just tabled its first report among the recommendations. It calls for an immediate review of the decision to block Qatar Airways, an immediate reinstatement of the ACCC's monitoring of domestic airlines and an extension of the committee until it hears from Alan Joyce and the Transport Minister, Catherine King. Joining me now is the chair of that committee, the Nationals Senate leader, Bridget McKenzie. Report's just been tabled. I guess the, the number one issue for a lot of punters out there uh, and and airline customers is you want an immediate review of the Qatar Airways decision. That's the number one. Yeah, absolutely, Kieran. In the middle of a cost of living crisis, the decision by the Albanese government to reject additional flights by Qatar Airways has meant higher prices, particularly for travellers uh, through to Europe, and less choice of destination. And every single stakeholder that the committee spoke to, whether it was competitor airlines, whether it was airports, exporters, uh, competition experts such as uh, Samuels and Fells, all recommended a review because it just doesn't make sense why the government would have rejected uh, Qatar Airways' application for additional flights. You've also suggested that you'll, read, you'll redo the report based on what you hear from Alan mm. Joyce. So mm. that remains a key priority for the committee? Well, absolutely. I mean, we've seen the Minister try and gag her own department, refuse to release documents to the Senate, refuse to answer questions in question time. What we have been able to find out, though, was in January, the Minister gave the CEO of Virgin uh, the impression that she would be approving the negotiating mandate to enter into negotiations with Qatar. That's in January. Roll forward six months we get the rejection. She signs off on a rejection. Nothing happens. She signs off on the rejection one week after Alan Joyce and Anthony Albanese agree to launch the Yes campaign in August, that that date comes out of the Prime Minister's diary. So all the way along, it's a bit like Hansel and Gretel, all the crumbs of evidence lead to Albo and Alan and the very cosy political and personal relationship. So we need to hear from Mr Joyce. You've also called for the review of the Sydney Airport demand management mm. scheme. Can you explain to our viewers what that's about? Is that, does that go to that issue that we spoke about recently of slot hoarding? Where slot Qantas hoarding. Basically, Qantas basically would uh, hoard the, the, um, the Absolutely. slots. Absolutely, and cancellation. Other airlines miss out. That's right. They can't compete for that, right? They're um, historically held, shall we say, uh, particularly by Qantas, and they use that in a way that means you're often bumped to the next flight coming out of Sydney, particularly the Sydney, Canberra, Melbourne, uh, Golden Triangle. Now, Peter Harris, the old productivity uh, commissioner head, he was commissioned to do a report into this. He's come up with some fantastic recommendations. They've been consulted on. They're ready to go. And we heard from him and a whole lot of other experts in this field that said getting flexibility into the slots, into Sydney, in and out of Sydney Airport, is a way that we can minimise cancellations and delays and make our aviation system more reliable for customers. This, another issue that went off in the committee was frequent flyer points, right? Uh, the whole fact that Qantas in particular has been devaluing, um, you know, their, their points and their restricting seats. We had uh, over 100 individual Australians write in with their particular stories. Now, as a result of this inquiry, we were able to get the CEO of Qantas to actually agree to solve those problems. Uh, and we're also recommending that the government look at a consumer protection scheme, a bit like they have in Europe, so that customers can have an aviation system where your planes take off and land at, you know, on time and your bags arrive with you at the other end. When you talk about the reinstating the ACCC and its authority mm. to or its governance over the aviation industry, uh, that would surprise a lot of viewers, I think, because the ACCC, you would have thought, still has oversight, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. Now, the government always says, oh, the, uh, you know, the ACCC looks at aviation. What the ACCC was doing... Um, prior to June was actually monitoring very at a granular level cancellations and delays and reporting that publicly, um, which was a, how we find out that Qantas has been behaving in the way it has to protect its market share. Now, the government decided to end that measure um, at the end of this financial year instead of continuing it. And it, everybody, bar Qantas, uh, wanted to see that reinstated, whether they were academics, um, other airlines didn't have a problem with that, those sort of things being measured, but Qantas absolutely 
uh, had a problem with it. And it just goes to the level of market power they have and how they abuse it um, to the cost and detriment of Australian travellers. We, we mentioned one of the recommendations of the report is to get Alan Joyce back. You've mm. also... You want Catherine King, the Transport Minister, to front. She's not going to do that, though. She says, she says why would she, given it would be a political stunt to get her there? Well, do, you, do you accept that the Minister won't? Well, I, I think very the Minister won't. Appear? The Minister should do the right thing and the responsible thing and formally write back to the committee. The committee wrote, uh, invited her to appear, and she has not yet formally responded. I mean, we can go by media accounts... But at the end of the day, you're a Minister of the Crown. Um, it's beholden on you to behave respectfully and appropriately, particularly with parliamentary committees. This committee has done a mountain of work in a very short period of time and we've already seen great outcomes and now we want the government to adopt these recommendations. Does the government have some cover in the Minister on the Qatar decision? I know they're separate issues, but mm. just in the last day also we saw the political leader of Hamas uh, in Qatar. That's where his office is. His, the political office for Hamas is in, in Qatar. The Qatar government responds to the attacks in Israel, saying Israel's responsible for the escalation that we're seeing. Is there some cover for the government in, in its decisions in relation to Qatar Airways because of the behaviour of the Qatar government that a lot of Australians might say, we don't want to cooperate or renegotiate with well, the government? Yeah, this, uh, none of that were the reasons given by either the Minister or the Department as to why uh, she rejected Qatar Airways' application. Um, we heard over 12 different reasons from the Government and the Department on why the Minister made her decision. One of the other pieces of evidence we heard from aviation experts was that there needs to be more transparency about what is the national interest, um, what economic impacts are you actually assessing, because they didn't do an assessment on airfares or on freight task. They simply asked Qantas and Virgin uh, if they thought Qatar Airways should be let in. One said yes, yeah. one said no. Should that, that, Something else is... Should that support of Hamas be part of the consideration, do you think, for the government? Well, I don't... It wasn't previously, and so I'm not sure why it would come in to it now. Um, you know, we have to make sure we make decisions that are in the national interest. Obviously, if there's security issues, that absolutely should be taken into account. But broadly speaking, we want it to be of economic benefit to Australians and the Australian economy, which all evidence to this committee says uh, approving Qatar Airways additional uh, flights would have delivered those benefits.